right, welcome to the podcast today. It is Wednesday, December 14th. Um, it's about time to talk about something. Okay, fine. But literally, very few people, as big as this is, not nobody, but very few people are talking about how big this is. Is. In fact, I'll try to pull some quotes from this, the Daily Beast article that finally encouraged me to talk about this. A couple of things before we get to that. Um, I've been in a foul mood for a couple of weeks. And last Thursday when I was uh, visiting with Pam, um, she threw at me a breathing technique that I have come across before. Um, I'm not doing her foghorn leg horn foghorn leg horn part of it she does the breathing part and then thinks of something that takes the time and i guess it was foghorn leg horn snoozing for her to do the uh, the technique um in short breathing in deeply for several seconds holding it for several seconds and breathing out very slowly she said for a lot of people it takes two times she's like you you do four well i've had uh, uh, plenty of moodiness over the last well, the, since the last visit with her on Thursday, they tried. It ain't working. Just as, like, it's not worked in the past, and I have been un, unable to meditate before. So, that's just me being cathartic and un, and unleashing a little anger. Um, Angry? So, you've never heard me talk about my neighbors before, right? Not really. Maybe something here and there, very, in a very vanilla way. Um, I have... The neighbor I see most is the woman across my driveway. Um, I have, we've never exchanged two words to one another. She has sent me several dirty looks. I am not exaggerating this or embellishing this for the point of sharing a story or for content one bit. She has sent me a lot of dirty looks. Maybe she doesn't like my dogs. I clean up after my dogs. It's not that. I, I don't know. Um, it's a single woman, maybe in her mid fifties. She has a daughter that goes to Ohio State. They live together and still until the girl started going to school. Maybe she's a widow. I don't know what it is. I just see this woman, and I try not to make eye contact. I'm not afraid, but I don't like getting the dirty looks. But something happened on Monday night that confirmed the fact that this is not a person I I, I want to be friendly with. So a friend of mine was picking up something from my home. In fact, it was a station vehicle parked outside my garage, which was closed because I wanted to leave it open because I didn't want the dogs running out, and it was cold. Um, he was only out there for 10 minutes, and he we could have moved it, but we, he just left it there. Not the best decision. Um, it was my neighbor who wanted to get out. How do I know? Because I, I heard that she wanted to get out. Not a... Uh, and I know that she didn't know how long that vehicle was there for, how long it would be there for. Anything. She had no context, uh, but there there wasn't a there wasn't a knock on the door. There wasn't a, a a courtesy toot. She skipped all that and went right to maniacally honking, like she had a person bleeding out who was missing limbs from a horrific accident, and she needed to get this person to the ER within minutes, or else they would die. That kind of confirmed the fact that this lady, she is, she is, she's probably the B word, and I don't want to associate with her. Um, I came across a list today from Variety, a reputable website. Uh, they listed, in their opinion, Taylor's top fifty songs. Um, to start the list, number fifty is Tim McGraw, which I think is on one of her very first albums. I mean, Taylor's been doing music now country and then it popped since 08 sounds about right uh i to me the first songs i played of hers on when i was doing what i do now on, on pop radio i think were teardrops on my guitar and our song both of which got pop versions they weren't so twangy as we say in the business um i didn't read this whole thing i'm the mo- i'm not the most diehard taylor fan but i am I am aware of how enormous she is. And by all rights, you know, if you go by my rule of the biggest artist currently on the planet to do the Super Bowl halftime show, while I'm delighted that it's Rihanna, it should be Taylor Swift. And 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 Beyonce is like a distant second. Um, Taylor's, I wanted to see where Antihero is. And I like that song a lot. Not necessarily for the mental health aspect of it. And she's sharing her demons um, and it's a good reminder that we are all our own worst enemies 
And it's a little hard for me to digest. She talks about a monster on the hill lurching for the town. She is objectively very attractive. And when someone like that says, I'm a monster, I have to do some mental gymnastics to realize that we all have these demons and they they, they lie to us all the time. And the lie is that she is a monster looking person. Unless she's standing next to someone who is that much better looking than her. Then maybe she is monstrous. But objectively speaking, as far as general comparison to society, she's very good looking. Antihero is number nine on the list, which I'm fine with. I'm fine with. And maybe um, as this song ends its run and we get some perspective, it'll be top five. But it's a very good song. Sonically, I like the way it sounds, how it's produced. Number five, Mirrorball. Number four, Style. Number three, Getaway Car. Don't know it. Number two, All Too Well, the 10-minute version from, I think, the uh, redone Red album. Number one, very hard to disagree with this. Even if you're like, there's no way that's that's Taylor's number one song. Every person that that has liked a Taylor song or several Taylor songs at some point in their life can go, yeah, I can see You Belong With Me being one of her top five, definitely top ten songs. You Belong With Me, uh, according to Variety, her number one song. Now, I, I will ask, is that the original version? Because You Belong With Me, in the, in the same era of um, our song and Teardrops On My Guitar, it too got a pop version, which is less twangy. Um, I don't even know. I, I guess, yeah, it comes out December 16th. So there's a, a dude... Um, sports guy that I enjoy going back and forth with. He works for the website uh, 538, does great sports data analysis, really neat guy, uh, Ty Schalter on Twitter. And and he tweeted a, a couple weeks ago something about how he doesn't know anybody interested in in, in the Avatar sequel. And, and, and that planted the seed, which then sprouted very quickly in my head. I'm like, yeah, I don't know anybody who's like, oh, God, I am so excited for the sequel. Um, this whole thing from the beginning of it, I have not been able to understand. I did not see the original Avatar in theaters. I know at the time it was like the greatest, biggest movie financially ever, even bigger than James Cameron's um, prior top movie, Titanic, which I think we're about to hit the 23rd, 25th, 25th, nobody cares about 23, unless you're Michael Jordan, the 25th anniversary of Titanic and his Terminator movies and all that. Uh, So let me preface this by saying, I am not disrespecting this man's vision and talent. He is an auteur, and as much as these are very mainstream films, they are very avant-garde. So I saw, I remember seeing Avatar, uh, on my really nice new HD big TV when I got it, whenever the movie came out 13, 14 years ago. And I was like, yes, this is, as promised, visually gorgeous. The story, if I remember, I do remember my opinion cor- correctly at the time then was, this is Pocahontas. I don't know if that was accurate then, but I'm pretty sure the story was not very unique. Or imaginative. Now, technically brilliant? Absolutely. Deserving of all the money it made. Um, This movie, I'm quite sure it will, because of uh, James Cameron's thirst for technology and why he waited, I guess, to either make the technology or wait for it to be perfected so he could make this movie 13 years later. And then I guess we're getting sequels to this one in the years to come, but I would not, I would not trust that with James Cameron, not saying that he's a liar, just saying that again, he is a esoteric auteur um, and, and, and out there creator. And if he doesn't like something, if it's not perfect, well, we're kicking that sequel five, five years down the road. Um, th- this is a wonderful article that I read that had me finally want to talk about this on the daily Um, I'll read a part of this. It's in that version of 2022. The one in which avatar is simply an artifact that the writer director returns with avatar way of the water A long-discussed follow-up and the first of four planned sequels, some of which have already been shot, that aims to revive the franchise and solidify its position as the moneymaker to beat them all. 
um, underestimating Avatar's financial potential. Financial potential would be fool's game. But creatively speaking, The Way of the Water is of a piece with its predecessor, a would-be epic of boundary-pushing Digi Grandeur in service of Pocahontas-style us versus them. Uh, this is a word salad. It's eloquently written. Uh, too long, didn't read is, well, where are the gifts? And can anybody name anybody in that movie? It, it, I had to be reminded it's Sam. I, I know that it's, uh, it's Jake Tully. I, I know that it's Sam Worthington who this movie was supposed to thrust him into being the A of A-plus actors. He's had a good career, but you thought it would have been bigger, even though you don't see him, just hear him. Uh, Zoe Saldana is, is is the other part of that. Um, and I'm sure this will be bu- beautiful. It will be orgasmic to the eye. It will be eyegasmic to watch. And I'm sure it will be the biggest financial movie of all time. But to prove this point here, to Ty's point that planted this seed, where are the gifts? Where are the memes? There are movies that some of us are familiar with that came out years or decades before we were born. And we are familiar, very familiar, even if we haven't seen them, what happens in those movies because of all the memes and gifts and the ways they penetrated pop culture. Do you have any Avatar gifts? Do you have any Avatar Memes that you'd like to share? Because I'm not familiar with any of them. And maybe there are a couple. But I think I made the point and Ty's point that for as beautiful as these movies are, as gifted as James Cameron is, as much money as Avatar has made and will make with this sequel and the ensuing ones, you'd think they'd be a little bit more part of pop culture because they're not. It's ironic in a way. As much a part as... Titanic was of pop culture. It made a sappy Celine Dion song, one of the biggest songs ever, and took a tale that we were all very familiar with and made it the biggest movie ever, or one of the biggest movies ever. It made Leonardo DiCaprio one of the greatest actors of all time and allowed him to do these roles now and date women half his age and be what he is. The same was true with Avatar, at least as far as performance of the movie is concerned, and the technical brilliance of it. But it's not a part of pop culture. Thanks for being here today.